2016, I woke up to the totally unexpected news that the UK had voted to leave the European Union. And I say it was totally unexpected, but only because in the weeks running up to the referendum, my news feeds on social media were only pro-Remainers. I didn't come across a single pro-Brexit perspective. And 20 years earlier, in 1996, MIT researchers, researchers predicted this of our interconnected world. Individuals may form virtual cliques, insulate themselves from opposing points of view, and reinforce their biases, having been empowered to screen out material that does not conform to their existing preferences. That's challenging. And that is what is now known as an echo chamber. My Brexit echo chamber wasn't because I didn't know Brexit voters. It was that I had created an environment on my newsfeed that only supported my view. And you may have seen the Netflix documentary, The Social Dilemma. And in this documentary, it highlights how social media platforms are now using artificial intelligence and algorithms to shape our news feeds around our data and our preferences. And the result is that we see more and more of what we want to see. We see more and more of what we already believe, whether it be politics or conspiracy theories or COVID, race, economics, climate change. And it's not just online. As humans, we are drawn to other people who are like us, who think like us, look like us, believe like us. And the danger of these echo chambers is that they lock us into tribalism and intolerance as we limit the number of perspectives that we let into our life. And this shrinks our understanding of the world around us. And I believe that we're called to greater unity, greater diversity in that. So this morning, I want to talk about exiting our echo chambers. And I should clarify, when I say exiting our echo chamber, I don't mean reforming all of our opinions, reforming all of our thinking, nor do I mean giving up a lot of space to hateful or oppressive talk in the name of expanding your thinking. There are some viewpoints that need challenging and dismantling. But what I want to communicate today is what I believe is the, the heart of God, the power of God to speak to us about being a spirit-led community in line with his nature and his kingdom, leading us into greater fullness and greater unity in our communities. So we're going to look at this in Acts chapter 10 and the story of Peter and Cornelius, a Jewish man and a Gentile man, and how they both exit their echo chambers and the transformation that follows that. So firstly, we've got Peter. So Peter was a disciple of Jesus. He knew him per personally. And he's an apostle in the early church. And as we've moved through the book of Acts, you might have noticed that all the followers of Jesus thus far have been Jewish. And in fact, Jewish believers in Jesus didn't think it was even possible to become a Christian without being Jewish. But then we have this moment in Acts 10, this decisive moment in which Peter has this vision, this strange vision of a sheep coming down from heaven with animals in it and the Lord saying, get up, kill and eat. And we have to understand that Peter had grown up in a Jewish environment. He'd followed Jewish customs and Jewish food laws that forbade him from eating certain animals. So this vision is crazy. Uh, this vision uh, in which God's voice speaks to Peter and tells him not to make distinctions between clean and unclean food anymore. But deeper than that, this voice is challenging Peter not to make distinctions between clean and unclean people. That is, Jewish and non-Jewish people. So when Cornelius is, uh, summons Peter, um, Peter's got two options, two choices. He can either continue to live in accordance with the life that he's known up until that point and refuse this offer to enter the house of an unclean person, or he can exit his echo chamber and be willing to change his thinking. And I wonder, when was the last time you let God change your thinking? I asked my husband, Henry, when the last time I changed my thinking was, to which he responded, I don't think you've ever changed your mind though you didn't used to like olives. Um, so that was not exactly the response I was hoping for. I was hoping for a more meaningful connection with this. But I think what it shows is that changing our thinking, changing our perspective 
isn't easy. It was a massive deal for Peter and he couldn't do it on his own. He needed the guidance of the Holy Spirit to help him to truly change. But when Peter did so, transformation followed. Peter's obedience to God's invitation to change his thinking led to a breakthrough. It led to a breakdown in barriers, making the greater fullness and freedom of the gospel available to all people, not just some. And then we've got Cornelius, this Roman centurion, a God-fearing good man. He's a Gentile who had subscribed to the monotheism of Judaism, but not to the Jewish law. So he was following God, but he didn't have the full picture of Jesus's life, death and resurrection. And he didn't have the Holy Spirit living within him. And he too encounters God in this strange way of a vision of an angel coming to tell him to invite Peter into his home. And again, Cornelius has got a choice to choose to write off this encounter, to keep following the status quo uninterrupted, undisrupted, or to exit his echo chamber by inviting other voices. What voices are you inviting into your life? What perspectives are you hearing or not hearing? When did you last seek out opinions that were unlike your own? in order to gain a greater understanding. When Cornelius invites another voice into his life, again, transformation follows. He gives Peter a platform to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. And so we see both men, Peter and Cornelius, exiting their echo chambers. They change their thinking and they invite in other voices and as a result, transformation follows. And we see this transformation play out. It begins, as we see in verse 34, with revelation. Peter says, I now realise. Peter had a revelation of something that he didn't realise before. He didn't realise the depth of the inclusivity of God and the expansiveness of his kingdom. But now he realises that God doesn't show favouritism, that God's heart is for every single person, Jew or Gentile, regardless of age, stage, status, race, politics, economic background. Peter has a, a revelation. And then we see Jews and Gentiles filled with the Holy Spirit. And this was a tipping point in the life of the church because we read that the Jewish believers were astonished that the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. You know, there's not much astonishing about a community of like-minded people thinking like-minded things. But a multi-ethnic, multicultural, dynamic community of people filled with the Holy Spirit that truly love one another, that's astonishing. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit on all people is astonishing. And this radical redefinition of the family of God is astonishing. And that's exactly what happens when Peter and Cornelius allow the Holy Spirit to break into their way of thinking and break them out of their echo chambers. They radically redefine the family of God. The obvious thing to happen as a result of, of this pouring out of the Holy Spirit on the Gentiles is that maybe two different movements would be birthed, one for the Jews and one for the Gentiles. But that's not what happened. It was one movement with Jesus at the centre, and we are living now in the outflow of that. God breaks down the barriers that we put between us. And in Ephesians 2, Paul ties this redefinition of family to the work of Jesus on the cross. He writes, For Jesus himself has made the two groups one, destroying the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross. And so this morning, we have a choice. Are we going to continue in the safety and security of our echo chambers, listening to the voices that we recognise, the voices that sound like us, are we going to continue to avoid opinions that challenge our thinking? Or, like Peter and Cornelius, are we going to exit our echo chambers? 
with the revelation that Jesus has made himself available through his death on the cross, not just for a few people, but for all people, I believe that God wants to fill us today with the power of his Holy Spirit, enabling us to choose to exit our echo chambers, making a way for greater fullness and greater unity, not just in our lives, but in our communities and our city.